Good afternoon. I'll uh, call the meeting to order if I could. Uh, I'll turn the meeting over to the clerk. Through you, Rochette. Um, first out of more, or order of business is a moment of silent reflection. Thank you. Thank you. Item two is declarations of pecuniary interest. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? And if so, please take the general nature thereof. Seeing none. Item three is adoption of the minutes. And there is a motion that the minutes of the special meeting dated April 19th and the regular meeting dated April 26th be adopted as printed. Moved by Councillor Gaffney and seconded by Councillor Henderson. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed, Fenny? That's carried. Item four is adoption of the addendum. And there was an addendum that was circulated prior to today's meeting. And that is to add two delegation requests and additional correspondence to item 5.1 on the Infrastructure, Transportation, and Safety Committee meeting agenda. And there is a motion that the addendum to the regular agenda of Council and Standing Committees dated May 10th be adopted. Councillor Bunting and Councillor uh, Burback, thank you. Moving in second discussion. All those in favor? Opposed, Fenny? That's carried. Item five is report of the Committee of the Whole in camera session. And item 5.1 at the May 10th session held just before this meeting. Matters concerning the following items were considered. The first, first two relating to proposed or pending acquisition or disposal of land by the municipality, and the third relating to advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege. And at the meeting, direction was given on all three items. Thank you. Moving to item six, hearings of deputations and presentations. There was none scheduled. Item seven is orders of the day. And item 7.1 is a resolution regarding the cancellation of a tender for the Argyle McKenzie reconstruction. And there is a staff recommendation that the report entitled cancellation of T2021-08 Argyle McKenzie reconstruction be received for information. By Councillor Beatty, seconded by Councillor Vazalakos. Discussion? Councillor Gaffney? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you, uh, uh, that's quite quite a substantial sticker shock uh, of a difference between our estimate and what it actually ended up being. Uh, ended up submitting. I just wonder if there might be some more substantive explanation on uh, on what may be the issue between 2.2 million and 4.1 million. Mr. Crinkla. Sure, we can answer that uh, through the mayor. Um, the two main components that uh, I think that's resulting from this higher than intended uh, bid price um, is the current situation. And I think that's the, the biggest factor uh, as noted in the report, um, we do benchmarking costs for all our line items in our reports uh, before we tender to give us a good idea of what the cost will be. And the majority of those line items were 20 to 60% more than they would have been in a normal given year. Um, it also doesn't help that uh, the tender got a bit out a bit later in the year as well. Um, so that uh, with the uncertainties um, is the, the most uh, significant reason why the price would be higher than anticipated. Um, the, uh, what also can be seen is that we had 23 people uh, bid on the, uh, the tender itself, but only two actually submitted bids and ideally you have more bids to have a more competitive uh, pricing in this matter. Councillor Gaffney, a follow-up? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, would the, uh, there was an item added late in the process uh, of an alternate, alternate uh, way of, uh, of uh, excavating the project to save or to attempt to save the, some of the trees. Uh, did that additional item end up being a lot more costly than what was originally estimated? Do you know? 
uh, through your worship. Sorry, uh, I haven't had a chance to look into the details of what the uh, the final numbers were for that project. Okay, thank you. Thank you, your worship. Anything further? If not, a uh, motion to receive the report, I believe, has been made and seconded. Correct, Madam Clerk? All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That's carried. Item 7.2 is a proclamation for the Canadian from the Canadian Personal Support Worker Network. And there is a motion that City Council hereby proclaims May 19th as Personal Support Worker Day in the City of Stratford in recognition and respect for their tireless efforts during the pandemic and every day. Moved by Councilor Vazalakos and Councilor Henderson. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. Item 7.3 is a resolution regarding transit accessible bus shelter tender. And there is a staff recommendation that the tender for the supply and installation of 12 five by 10 and two four by eight accessible bus shelters and concrete pads as required be awarded to Daytech Limited in the amount of $153,018.95, including HST, and that the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign the necessary contract agreement. Moved by Councilor Ritzma, seconded by Councilor Burback. Discussion? Councilor Gaffney. Thank you again, Your Worship. Uh, and through you, uh, the one that's going at Waterloo and Ontario Street, that's going to be on Waterloo Street where the existing stop is now. Mr. Mosley. Uh, through Your Worship, uh, that's correct. It'd be um, right where the bench is uh, presently now. So it'd be in the uh, almost in the same exact spot. Okay, thank you. Anything further? All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That's carried. Item 7.4 is a resolution for a road widening, and there is a staff recommendation that the Corporation of the City of Stratford accept Part 1 on Plan 44R-5845 as public highway and dedicate as forming part of Vivian Street, Line 37. Moved by Councillor Vazalakos, seconded by Councillor Burback. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? That's carried. Item 7.5 is a proclamation from Infinite Pride Stratford, and there is a motion that City Council hereby proclaims June 2021 as Pride Month in the City of Stratford and authorizes the flying of the Pride flag at Stratford City Hall for the month of June. Mover. Councillor Henderson, seconded by Councillor Ritzma. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that's carried. Item 7.6 is a resolution regarding the lease of a 150 McCarthy Road West for farming purposes. And there is a staff recommendation that an agreement with Sonova Farm Incorporated for the lease of 15.38 acres of farmland located at 150 McCarthy Road West for a period of two years to December 31st, 2022 be awarded and that the mayor and city clerk or their respective delegates be authorized to sign the agreement. Councillor Gaffney and Councillor Vazalakos moving in seconding discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed to any? That's carried. Item 7.7 .7 is a resolution regarding the consideration of temporarily making Wellington Street one way and there is a staff recommendation that the existing lane configuration and direction of travel on Wellington Street from St. Patrick Street to Downey Street be maintained. Moved by Councillor Bunting and seconded by Councillor Clifford. Discussion? Councillor Burback. Thank you. I just wanted to thank staff for taking the time to create the report and um, I thought it was a very valuable discussion to have and um, it's something that we can also look, look at the information for the future in case we decide that that's something that we want to go ahead with. Um, I, I do like the recommendation. Um, I guess it was option four uh, to create a one way, um, which would have a pedestrian um, access path close to Market Square. Uh, so I won't be supporting this resolution, but I, um, I look forward to bringing this discussion back in the future. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Two opposed, that's carried. 
Item 7.8 is a resolution to appoint municipal bylaw enforcement officer, and there is a staff recommendation that council amend bylaw 60 2003 as amended to appoint Kelton Frey as a municipal bylaw enforcement officer for the city of Stratford commencing May 10th, and that the appointment of Rob Renneker as municipal bylaw enforcement officer for the city be rescinded. Moved by Councillor Vasilakos and seconded by Councillor Burback. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed to any, that's carried. Item eight, business for which previous notice has been given and there was none scheduled. So moving to section nine, report to the standing committee. Item 9.1 is the community services committee and there are two items listed for consideration that as follows. Item 9.1.1 is the Orr Insurance Almond Arena four o'clock advertising agreement renewal. And item 9.1.2 is the free transit during the pandemic. Councillor Beattie, you'll move and seconded by Councillor Seven. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Item 9.2 is the report of the Social Services Committee. And there are four items listed for consideration as follows. Item 9.2.1, Social Services Relief Fund Phase 3 Allocation. Item 9.2.2, Alternative Housing Pilot Federal and Provincial Funding Update. Item 9.2.3, Alternative Housing Pilot Federal and Provincial Funding Update and item 9.2.4, update on social services relief funding. Moved by Councillor Henderson and seconded by Councillor Bunting. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. Item 10 is notice of intent and there was none scheduled. So moving to item 11, reading of the bylaws. There are six bylaws listed for consideration as follows. Item 11.1 is repeal of bylaw 7-2001, authorizing the signing of the contribution agreement for the social service relief fund phase two hold back for the construction of eight modular supportive housing units. Item 11.2 is the agreement for use of advertising space on the score clock at William Allman Memorial Arena. Item 11.3 is to accept transfer of part one on plan 44R-5845. Item 11.4 is dedication of public highway forming part of Vivian Line 37. Item 11.5 is a lease agreement for 150 McCarthy Road West. And item 11.6 is appoint municipal bylaw enforcement officer. And these bylaws can be taken collectively upon unanimous vote of council present. Moved by Councillor Henderson and second by Councillor Burback. They be taken collectively. All those in favor? Opposed to any? And that's carried unanimously, so we'll go to first and second reading. Moved by Councillor Vazalakos and seconded by Councillor Beattie. That bylaws 11, 1 through 6 be read at first and second time. All those in favor? Opposed to any? That's carried. Moving for third and final reading, Councillor Gaffney and Councillor Bunting for bylaws 11, 1 through 6. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Item 12 is a consent agenda. Are there any items listed on the consent agenda to be considered by council? Councillor Vazalakos. Um, I was wondering if we could endorse CA 2021-62. That's the um, water protection legislation from Fort Erie. And I'm wondering if council could endorse that item if we could do that. You'll move uh, endorsement, Councillor Vazalakos. Councillor Ritzman, you'll second that. Further, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Anything else on the consent agenda? Next item. For your worship, item 13 is new business. Are there any new business items? Councillor Seven. Thank you. I wanted to, um, I guess, sort of revisit the, the fees and uh, the install uh, that uh, businesses for boardwalks and pop-up patios are um, are being, uh, I guess, charged. And I know we had discussion about this for waiving uh, some of the, the applicants' fees, but I I guess what, after, I've, I've had a couple of um, business owners reach out to me and, and I feel like, I feel like this might be something that would be worthwhile reconsidering um, waiving the fees. Um, I'm just bringing this up because I feel like it aligns in a way to me that is similar to the way that uh, the bed and breakfast fees, we, we've waived those for last year and this year. Um, and so I, I just would either, 
I guess I'm just looking for either, I, I guess I have to decide, but possibly a report um, to bring back at the next meeting um, to look at how much that would cost. And because I would like to see the fee waived um, for, for all the applicants uh, for 2021. Thank you. You move that a seconder for that motion. Councillor Burback, Councillor Henderson. Do we not just have a report at our last meeting? Maybe the, the clerk would be able to tell us now and then we could make a decision because if you're waiting till the next meeting, that's the end of May, right? I'll uh, recognize the deputy clerk, Mr. Bantock. So through your worship, um, last year, the boardwalk fees uh, were approximately $800 uh, per uh, delivery install and removal. Uh, so the recommendation that was passed uh, earlier this year on the previous report uh, recommended that same uh, not to exceed that fee. Um, so if it was lower then uh, that would be the fee that was charged. Um, we're expecting again that it will be around that fee. Um, however, we do have, uh, a, I believe there are five fewer applicants at this time. Um, so the total cost at this time would be slightly less than it was last year. I believe it was about 16,000 uh, was the cost last year for boardwalk delivery install and removal. Um, and then the remaining costs on top of that would only be for uh, applicants uh, from last year's program that are participating this year. Uh, and again, I believe there are about 14 uh, at this time, um, but the, uh, they are the reduced fees. So you have your boardwalks participants uh, paying the 196 per month um, and then the various pop-up uh, costs per month. Um, so those fees, because they've been reduced already will be less. It's really the, uh, the boardwalk installation, uh, delivery and removal costs um, that is the most substantive at this time remaining. Thank you. Councillor Seven and Councillor Vasilakos. Actually, I'll let, I'll let Councillor Vasilakos go first. Um, so I believe this would require council reconsideration. And, and so part of this is, is I do know we've had correspondence from businesses about the boardwalk fee, but then also about patio fees and a number of different fees. So uh, if, if we could list I know that we don't want to defer this or make a decision, but I don't have all the details around what businesses are asking for and what pressures they have. And I know when we made this decision, it was before we headed into this lockdown. It was before we realized lockdown is probably in all likelihood going to be extended. And so I think the calculus of economic recovery is going to be slightly different. So I know I would like to see us reconsider all of the fees that go into it. But at the same time, not having them, not having all of the, the information in front of us, I think it's very difficult to, to open up the discussion again. So uh, I don't know whether it falls under new business, but I'm wondering if we could um, list this as a notice of motion for the next meeting to reconsider the patio and boardwalk fees. And that way, at least if it's a notice of motion, we could have recirculated all that information around the economic costs and also would give us a little bit of opportunity to uh, reach out to the CDC and the BIA and some of their members and see where they're sitting in terms of, of their business right now, get, right now given the lock, lockdown. Councillor Henderson. I think if we're going to do that, um, I believe Chris said that there was like five that weren't participating. And if say we make a decision that we're going to cover the cost, those five may decide to do it again. I'm not sure if it's the cost that's prohibiting them or staff or what the problem is, but that's something we should look into also. Councillor Seven. Um, I would I would withdraw my motion motion if Councillor Vasilakos wants to put her motion forward. So if the mover, Councillor Burback is a second or your final that Councillor Vasilakos, would you like to put a notice of motion forward? Yes, place a notice of motion for reconsidering both the boardwalk and patio fee for the season um, to be listed at the next meeting. Councillor Bunting, you'll second that. Seconder for that, Councillor Burbeck, then Councillor Bunting, sorry.
through you, Your Worship. Um, j just a point uh, to bring up is that uh, it's my understanding that the um, patios are going to be installed uh, as of this Thursday are starting to be installed and and uh, they will be finished by May the 20th. At least that's what the hopes are. I'm not saying that we can't do the fee thing afterwards, but I'm just bringing it to your attention. That's all. Thank you. Anything further? I'll call the question. Uh, all those in favor? Again, can I have the hands? One, one, two, three, four, five. Opposed? I just, I wanted to say something. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Henderson. Sorry, to, um, if we're installing the patios, like starting next week, um, I would wonder if we should be checking with the five that didn't want to do it this year because it will probably be cheaper for us to bring them all out at the same time and do them rather than do what was it 14 15 or something that we're going to do at this time and then and then if we change the fees and the other ones decide they want to go and do it and then they want to come in later it would cost us more i would think mr bantock for your worship uh, so right now staff are in a position uh, where we're trying to be proactive and get the boardwalks out uh, as soon as we can so that we can try and align it if uh, uh, outdoor dining is permitted to resume. Um, so at this time, we're only putting out boardwalks for those that we've received completed applications for and which have been approved uh, just because we don't know uh, which future or additional applications may come in. Dr. Henderson. Could we have a quick meeting on this before before they're going to start the board work going back out? Because staff already has all the information, so maybe we could have something later this week. That way, if they're going to bring, if, if more people want to come on, they're all going out at the same time. Just an idea. Because otherwise, uh, we won't be dealing with it till the 25th, and that's after the long weekend. I see Mr. Uh, Councilor Bunting has his hand up. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, with respect to um, the installation last year, was it done uh, pro bono by contractors and volunteers? Councillor uh, City Clerk, Ms. Defoe. Uh, through Your Worship, yes, last year through the Economic Recovery Task Force, they did a secure um, contractors, and I believe some of it was funded through the grant funding. Uh, this year, the city is responsible for the cost, which is why the fees were paid. Um, with respect to Councillor Henderson's suggestion, we would strongly recommend not waiting to install the boardwalks. Once the boardwalks are installed, the restaurants will then need to set up their patio, and we have to complete an inspection with our chief building official and our health unit and fire to ensure that it complies with all of the regulations of the day. Um, so if we were to wait for all further applications to be included, it could delay it even further. So we would recommend proceeding with the install for the approved applications that we have now. Okay. So do we, do we have an estimation as to how much, how much staff time would be involved with this now that uh, it's no longer volunteer? I can cost involved. So through you, Richard, if I understand the question correctly, um, we have secured a contractor again, and the fees uh, quoted by the deputy clerk are the cost for the install. Thank you. All right. Anyone further? Councillor Henderson? Sorry, I was misunderstood there. That was the idea behind us having another meeting within, say, a day or two, so that nothing is held up and we can make a decision and that way, if somebody else wants to get back in, because my understanding was we weren't starting installation until next week. The 20th. Right, so if we could have something right away and that way, if anybody else changes their mind, it can all be done at once, especially if we change how much we're gonna charge. That could have a big impact on a uh, a smaller business that you know has to get patio tables and get everything out. Just an idea. Yeah, Ms. Defoe was. Uh, so through the chair, uh, just looking to the deputy clerk 
we would still recommend proceeding with the currently approved application. Once a business decides they want to apply, they still have to fill out the application, submit required insurance, as well as a drawing. It would then need to be circulated to all the internal external agencies. Um, and that does take a little bit of time. Everyone has been working extremely fast and trying to approve them as quickly as possible, but that could just further delay already approved applications. So we would recommend proceeding forth with the approved application. And should anyone want to come on, then we would be happy to review the application and arrange for the install at a later date. Anything further? Councillor Vazalakos. And, and that would be my, like, my suggestion was that we revisit the fees, not necessarily stopping all the activity that's going on right now in terms of, of people who are all ready to, to do the installations. I'm open to, if, if, if staff feel that having an additional meeting would be useful to give time for, like to give additional time before the installs, and I'm, I'm open to my notice being for a special meeting, but that would be, you know, contingent on everyone's schedule and, and staff time and everything else. All right, further. Councillor Bunting. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I guess my, my, my thought would be, uh, what if the people who didn't reapply as it were and applied and we want to make them free and all of a sudden there's two or three or four more other ones. Uh, we're looking at more materials, more labor to construct them and so on and so forth. So those are things worthy of consideration. Mr. Bantock, do you have any information on that? For your worship, uh, we do have about four or five sets uh, remaining just based on the number of uh, applications received uh, and those that have been approved. Uh, but uh, to answer Councillor Bunting's question, yes, there is a limited number uh, of boardwalks available. All right, is there anything further? The question then is on a notice of motion to be heard at the May 25th council meeting. All those in favor? Councillor Henderson, are you in favor or against? Favor, okay, opposed? or oppose the motion carries. Thank you. Next item. Mayor Rishup, item 14 is adjournment to standing committees. And there is a motion that council meeting adjourn to convene into standing committees as follows, the infrastructure, transportation and safety committee uh, and to reconvene into council following. Moved by Councillor Ritzma, seconded by Councillor Burback that we adjourn for the purposes of standing committee. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. I'll turn the meeting over to Councillor Vazalakos, as chair. It'll be, it'll be Councillor Burback covering this meeting. Okay, Councillor Burback, over to you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call to order the Infrastructure, Transportation and Safety Committee. Uh, first of all, do, are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? Seeing none. Um, item three, we do have um, an adoption of the addenda already added. Uh, item four, we have subcommittee minutes for your information. Uh, item five, we will move to the addenda. Uh, 5.1 is a proposed closure of TJ, TJ Dolan Drive from Center Street to St. David Street. And we have a request from the following citizens to address the committee with respect to this matter, Patrick O'Rourke and Kirk Rail. And I would also like to ask for a motion that we would hear from them and that also that we would, would um, accept the correspondence from the list of residents about the same matter. Councillor Gaffney, you're moving that item. Councillor Vasilako seconding. All those in favor? Okay, that's carried. Uh, so first up, we would hear from Mr. O'Rourke. Oh, excuse me, just a point. I believe that I believe the clerk has something that she wishes to address. Oh, sorry. Go uh, ahead. The chair, if we could add the delegation request for Miss Jane Marie Mitchell as well. Um, that is noted on your agenda as well. Okay. 
do we need to vote on that as well? Uh, if you could move and second the hearing of Ms. Jane Marie Mitchell, that would be great. Yes. Okay, oh, moved move, move by Councillor Vasilako, second by Councillor Ritzma. All in favor? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. So now we'll move to hearing from Mr. O'Rourke for his presentation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go Good. ahead. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on, on this proposal. I think the correspondence you've received pretty clearly demonstrates both public position and opposition and some of the problems with the proposal, including the fact that TJ Dolan is already a motor use road. It's like T.J. Dolan from St. Vincent to Huron, McLaughlin on the other side of the river from John to Avon. There's no need to convert it to motor use. It already is. It's also clear that the management report understates the impact of a closure. It requires the creation of a parking lot on Center Street, where there's currently a memorial garden. Turn around on St. David, if you've driven down there, you realize that it will impact green space and a number of trees on the, the south side of TJ Dolan. It's hard to tell from the management report because there are no drawings to identify exactly where these things are going to go. And also the report fails to consider option four. Leave TJ Dolan as it is and fund some other infrastructure and accessibility project. I don't want to go into detail on these points. It's been done in any number of letters. But I do want to talk about the context, the process that led us to here today. As I understand it, the city was informed of somewhere around $300,000 in provincial funding for infrastructure projects. Staff then came forward the committee with this proposal. It was a staff preference. Subsequently, according to the management report, the city applied for funds for this proposal before council had approved it. In effect, staff have made a decision on the best use of this provincial funding, and they're now seeking council's okay. I think this process is flawed. Staff, when informed of the funding, should have prepared a list of potential projects and their pros and cons, and in consultation with the city's accessibility advisory committee and for projects in the downtown core of the BIA. This list of possible projects have gone to council, where council could decide which ones best meet the city's objectives and the needs of residents. Because at the core, I fundamentally believe elected members of council, not staff, should make decisions on how best to spend the taxpayers' money. So I urge the committee to reject the proposed closure and to direct staff to do what I think they really should have done at the start, consult with advisory committee in the BIA. There are a list of projects that meet the criteria of the provincial funding and return that to committee with analysis and recommendations. I realize $300,000 is not a great sum of money, but the principle remains. And with regard to alternative projects, I believe the Shakespearean Gardens which have serious accessibility problems, merits consideration. In terms of impact, far more people visit the gardens on a sunny day than when you use TJ Dolan in a week. It's a bigger problem, greater benefit. In any event, thank you for the opportunity to speak. And again, I urge you to say no. Thank you, Mr. O'Rourke. Does anybody on council have questions for Mr. O'Rourke? 
Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to our next presenter, Kirk Rail. Mr. Rail. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, the previous speaker addressed uh, almost everything that I had to uh, point out to the council today. All of it, the uh, fact that uh, TJ Dolan uh, currently now is very a park like setting. And to go ahead and put two parking lots and a cul de sac at either end of it, you end up with, with nothing but inconsistency between the TJ Dolan natural area and the currently proposed walking path. My other concern goes back to the winter uh, maintenance on, on the hill. Uh, cars parked in the cul-de-sac trying to make up the hill get stuck and now how do we get them off the hill because we have no emergency road access to come in on the other way uh, that's a great concern I have thank you very much for hearing my concerns appreciate it thank you do any members of council have questions for Mr. L uh, seeing them, we'll move to our last presenter, please. Hello. Hi, go ahead, please. Thank you for allowing me to be heard. I saw on the agenda the three options that Council had to consider, and I'd like to support option two and wish to explain why. I see a trail on the north side a one-way street in the middle, and parking on the south side. The barrier of the curb would help to ensure safety, but I also suggest a reduced speed limit of 20 kilometers an hour to help slow vehicles down. I see a narrow entrance from St. David Street or a one-way um, street with the speed limit posted there to help ensure safety. I don't understand why two of the existing streetlights require relocation, but this would allow everyone to access the area, even vehicles. Residents living close by may be in favor of a trail only, but they don't have to travel to enjoy the environment. I tend to use the area more on the weekend when there's lots of tourists in the city. Question. Other than the observations that I made to council, with about five to 11 vehicles parked while I was there on TJ Dolan. Is there any data to show how many vehicles use this part of TJ Dolan? An hour ago, I counted 13 vehicles. Lots of people use this for parking. Another question, how many square meters of pavement recently paved in 2017 will have to be torn up to put pavement elsewhere? Another suggestion, is to have a bike rack so those who wish to bike to the trail and then walk into the trail, especially across from uh, St. John Street. With $402,000 available for this project, I still suggest adding a washroom facility, as none exist west of the boathouse to serve those traveling along the river, the cemetery, and TJ Dolan Trail and Drive. With the number of people traveling in the area, there is demand and it would be welcomed. I do support leaving it the way it is as well because things are going fine. Um, if safety is an important issue, then the curb would be a good idea. But in conclusion, I feel it's a win-win situation, making the area more accessible for more people to enjoy the natural environment of the area that's offered. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. Does anyone have any questions? Um, seeing none, we'll move on to the um, to item six. Just have to switch my screen, sorry. Uh, to item 6.1, the proposed closure of T. Day Dolan Drive from Center Street to St. David Street. Uh, and we do have attached a uh, staff report and maybe I'll ask if Mr. Dulovic is perhaps presenting this because he did prepare the report or Mr. Crinklaw. There he is. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, through the chair, since I, I did prepare the report, uh, I was decided that I, I would speak to the report. 
Um, and, and as noted in the report, uh, I'll just go over a few highlights. You know, we did t uh, contact police, uh, uh, fire and, and ambulance services or paramedic services. They expressed no concerns with the closure uh, of the, this section of TDA Dolan if it was to be done. Um, there was also a discussion at the city's active transportation advisory committee and they did pass a motion in favor uh, of the closure of the road uh, from uh, uh, St. David to Center Street and conversion to a multi-use uh, trail. Uh, I did want to talk about, uh, there was a comment made with respect to Memorial Gardens. Um, th they will not be removed, they will not be touched. When we talked about parking, it was very limited parking. I know during the discussions uh, at the last uh, uh, meeting, a couple of meetings when this was discussed by by, by council, a uh, suggestion was maybe just use the end of uh, uh, TJ Dolan at Center Street to accommodate some parking. So we're, we're talking maybe four or five spaces at most to use some of that existing uh, hard surface that's there and converting some of that at Center Street for some, for some parking to make up for what was lost uh, on TJ Dolan, but no way were we uh, considering con uh, constructing uh, a large parking lot to uh, make up for, for the loss along TJ Dolan. That wasn't the intent. Um, another comment was made as to how this got here. Uh, this came up as a result of when we first dealt with the closure and conversion of TJ Dolan from St. Vincent to St. David to a multi-use trail. One of the questions that came up from uh, a counselor was, well, can we look at the rest of TJ Dolan from St. David to Center Street? So it was based on those comments made at, uh, uh, when we looked at that first section that staff looked at the next section uh, this section here. So it was, it was based on that, that we, we uh, reviewed this. Um, with respect to the um, application that was made, um, it, it was something that came, came out and there was a quick response required by staff. Uh, we looked at this, it's a, it's a purpose application, was for active transportation, and uh, we were required to name a project and this project was named. We do expect an announcement uh, by the federal and provincial government uh, within a week or two as to uh, whether we were successful. Um, really, the, the money is, is ours. Uh, what they said was that uh, this is your money. They just needed to approve of the project and wanted to make sure that it fulfilled their mandate of uh, active transportation. Uh, so that, that's where we're at. Um, so when we looked at, you know, we looked at a number of options. I know some people, you know, we're talking about the road. Um, there was work done in 2017 by Public Works where we put a lot of asphalt down, but both operations staff and engineering staff have commented that the road base is not suitable. There isn't proper under drainage. And, uh, and as some people have commented, there's not a lot of vehicles that use this section of road and already we're seeing some, uh, some, uh, some uh, issues coming through uh, on the road because of the, the poor road base that's in there. And as noted in the report, to properly fix that road, we're, we're talking approximately $200,000. Um, that's kind of a rundown. So as, as I said, we looked at three options. So if there are any more questions from council with respect to it, uh, I'd be happy to answer any further questions. Councillor Rasalakos. Um, I have a question in terms of, um, so the multi-use path that will be going in, there will be a multi-use path um, and it, the, the idea would be that it's positioned further away from the river so there's an additional green space addition to the parkland and that the plan would be to allow to add benches and in the future picnic tables so part of the um, conversion away from a road that's hard to maintain and expensive to keep redoing even though it's too close to the river is that it expands our parkland that it that it reclaims parkland and and increases public space for use of this is this correct yeah through the chair um as noted uh the the alignment of the trail would be proposed to be more in the, in the center of the existing road alignment alignment which would then create more green space um between the trail and the edge of the river uh, so that would be the intent. This would allow then spa uh, a space for uh, uh, benches as noted, picnic tables uh, along uh, between the trail and the river as an amenity uh, along that section. And again, that, that can be explored uh, if this project were, were to go ahead in the future to uh, install those type of amenities. Thank you. 
So the other question I had was around um, the is there's so I'm assuming there's an ongoing cost to maintenance of the current road, but also in terms of winter maintenance and salt application. But one of the things that I'm, I was I was looking at that road and all of the salt and sand runoff from that current road would be going into the river or or so. I'm just thinking about the environmental impact of the current road that's so close to the river. Um, it, for a road that doesn't have, you know, uh, isn't isn't connected to storm, doesn't have curbing, all of those kinds of things. And so from an environmental impact perspective, going to a multi-use trail would reduce the amount of salt and sand that would end up in the river system, I'm assuming. Yeah, through the chair, um, you know, this this the intent is to maintain this trail year round as we're doing with other trails for access. Uh, but because it's a smaller hard surface, it is a paved surface that we're talking about here, uh, there would be less sand and salt that would be the amounts that were applied to the road versus what would be applied to the trail would be less, so it'd be less of that. And also you have a, a larger green strip that could capture some of that material coming off of a trail before it got to the river. Okay, that's it for now, thanks. Great, Councillor Gaffney. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll move the... Uh staff recommendation and I have a question and something to say. Okay, do you have a seconder for the uh, Councillor Vasilakos? Okay, go ahead with your question. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, uh, um, the slope on St. David Street from TJ Dolan, <clears throat> it's not gonna change, I expect. Through the chair, no, well, there'll be no, ch no, no changes there. So it'll be the same as next winter as it was last winter. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I just want to make it perfectly clear to everyone, everyone on council and everyone uh, viewing in, that I was the one who made the suggestion at subcommittee because I thought to myself after we had that discussion about the TJ Dolan between um, St. David and St. Vincent, uh, uh, that extension of TJ Dolan is basically a shortcut for two houses. Uh, it's really not a major, majorly traveled road to get from point A to point B for uh, everyday uh, traffic, I suggest. So that's what, that's what made me ask the question. And here we are today. So thank you. Councillor Henderson. I, um, I was just thinking we should have another option is when we were deciding about whether to close from um, the TJ Dolan from St. Vincent to St. David, we shut the road down for one year and to get feedback from anybody that was using it. Why aren't we doing that with this? Because we're already seeing how much feedback we're getting. And I'm sure there's others that aren't going to be aware that this is going to happen, that it's going to affect them. Um, and, and Councillor Gaffney, did you say option two? Is that what you were saying? Option three. I, I, I... That was the option. staff recommendation that you moved was option three. And I won't be able to support that. At the minimum, I think we should have at least one trail coming through there because as the people on St. David streets have already mentioned and that when there's ice, it's hard for them to go up the hill so at least if we had one way coming down and through it's a relatively quiet area I myself never see anybody speeding along there because just the elements of the trees and the, the nature of the area people tend to I don't know feel like they're more in a nature area and they go seem to go slower to, from what I've seen and I see a lot of people fishing off the dam there and parking along the edge so um, I think it's smart that we have a multi-use trail coming along because we're coming, you know, from St. Vincent and then we can continue and then you can go into the TJ Dolan actual park area. But I can't, I can't, and I can't support closing it completely unless we do a year shutdown and get feedback from that. Could Mr. Dulovic, could you possibly answer the possibility of, of waiting a year to do that and may, maybe how that might affect funding? To the chair, yeah, that may have an impact on funding. Um, and of course, first, I don't remember the timelines, but there was some time restrictions on when 
uh, the money had to be spent by and I'd have to uh, staff would have to confirm when that that money would have, have to be spent by. Can we use that funding for something else? Again, through the chair, uh, we'll have to wait for the announcement. Um, uh, we may then have to go back if it's possible to ask for another project then. And uh, not sure what the timeline would be, if that's allowed and what the time would, timeline would be to get a response from, from the federal government and the provincial government. So basically, if we get it, it's not really our money. It's only project specific, right? Through the chair, yeah, it, it was specific to active transportation projects as uh, what uh, uh, um, we, we applied for under the stream. It was very limited as to what this money could be used for. Councillor Vasilakos. Sorry, so I'm gonna, I'm obviously in support of, of the, the motion. And um, one of the challenges we have is, is that um, maintaining a road, even a one-way road with the weights of the vehicles. Um, it's, a, it's an expensive, short little stretch, like Councillor Gaffney says, like it's, it's very, very expensive for the, for the amount of traffic that needs to use it. It's not a linkage that, that cars absolutely need. It doesn't, it, it's a quick little shortcut, but even the shortcut doesn't save a whole lot of distance when you do it. And yet converting it to a multi-use trail and adding green space is something that the entire community can benefit from. And one of the things that I, I like about it is it creates a linkage that has the potential to make, if, if, you, if you start, let's say at the park system at the Huron Bridge, you can make a pedestrian and cycling only linkages all the way out if you go you know, through the service road behind Janan. And, and it's a trail there, you can go all the way out to um, alone um, and hit the multi-use trail there. So when we start to talk about connectivity and building connectivity, we've spent years um, doing little bits and pieces around the city going, okay, eventually we'll fill this in, eventually we'll fill this in. And here's our opportunity to fill this piece in, which creates a, a really nice um, uh, active transportation system that also adds parkland amenity for citizens. And, and the, the idea of the ongoing cost of maintenance and redoing asphalt on that, that stretch of road so close to the river, it doesn't make any sense to me to, to continue it. Um, people will still have access to go fishing. They'll still have access to, to park and use the system. It's just that that little stretch is not necessary for, uh, for car transportation. Councillor Clifford. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, with all these emails and talking about a parking lot in the park, I was going to ask our director, is, like, is there a proper drawing of what's going to happen? Uh, Kathy was talking about it's going to be back for, from the river, but is there a real drawing to, uh, to show us exactly the location of the path and the parking on Center Street? Mr. Dulovic? Through the chair, I, I, I know it was to the director and, and he'd have to ask the director if there's been any work done on, on the design for this project. I'm not aware if it's, if it's started yet. I think at most they did some surveying. Um, I do wanna say, I, thanks to the director, I was provided some information as to when the construction has to be completed. I, I knew it was tight, I didn't realize it was this tight, but the, they say the project has to be completed by the end of September of this year. Councillor Henderson. Just one more thing. When we talk about that, it makes it accessible for everyone. It doesn't make it accessible for anybody that's in a wheelchair and likes to drive along that section. So the 10 to 15% of our population that um, has accessible needs will no longer be able to enjoy that section. I, I, I don't really understand the comment because people in wheelchairs can use multi-use paths too, and they can drive, park, and and use that path safely. Um, so I'm not quite sure. It's it's cars that we're limiting. We're not closing the the we're not closing any any part of TJ Dolan. We're actually opening it up to use for for people, uh, but we are limiting the use of of motorized vehicles. There are some people that 
you know, are in cars when they drive along and look at things that have accessible mm -hmm. needs. And since we haven't seen the drawings, I don't know how the parking is going to be on Center Street coming down a hill in a wheelchair to be able to get around onto the TJ Dolan. I haven't seen any of those drawings, so I don't know how that's going to happen. That'd be pretty steep. Um, Councillor Seven and then Councillor Vasilakos. Thank you. So, I mean, I guess, yeah. So I personally, I don't support really any changes to the TJ Dolan uh, road. Um, I was biking down there actually yesterday, uh, coming up that stretch of road um, from the portion that we have already closed to, to this portion. And, you know, it seems like every time I'm down there, there are cars parked along the side of the road. Um, I, I feel like closing the first portion made sense, um, but this portion feels like it's a case of if it isn't broken, um, I don't really see, I don't really see the benefit um, to spending the money and the resources on, on changing it. Um, I think, I think we have a low traffic, uh, which has been acknowledged in this discussion. We have a low traffic road um, that you're able to, uh, you know, bike on active transportation, drive through, people can park there. Uh, we don't really have a, a known shortage of parking, but there, there is adequate parking. Um, and if we're going to be taking that parking away um, and replacing it with a few spots, uh, maybe four, uh, we're really looking at, we're restricting, you know, we're going to be opening up this area, um, as was mentioned in the discussion, to possibly more park space, more benches, things like that, to attract people there. But we're going to have more people wanting to go there, potentially. Uh, at, at the least, we'll have more people or the same, and we'll have much less parking. Um, Councillor Henderson raises a good point. Right now, uh, you can go down there if you have uh, accessibility needs. You can go and park right down by the water and get out if you wish there. Um, many people drive down there that don't live close to TJ Dolan, either to enjoy the nature trails or to enjoy uh, any of that area. It's quite nice. And a lot of people don't live there or aren't, aren't able to use active transportation to get to that part of town. And so I feel like we're really cutting those people out. We have a lot of park space in by the river and everywhere, but we also have a lot of parking to accommodate that park space. So people can drive down there, park right in the middle of it and then enjoy it from there. And I don't see why we would treat this any different. I think, I think the need for people to drive there, um, whether, or not, whether or not we want them to drive there is a whole other discussion, but I think People need to drive there. Some people need to, some people choose to. And I think that, that, that that's perfectly okay. And I think we need to leave that as an option. So I don't support the motion. Councillor Vasilakos. I was just gonna to speak to Councillor Henderson that the parking isn't on Center Street on the hill. The parking would be at the bottom. Like the whole, the idea of putting the Maltese trail and moving it back would need to do free up some, some room at the end there. Um, at the TJ Dolan for, for parking. And what's different now is the parking right now is just gravel. Whereas if you could at least um, have, so if somebody were to drive there that had mobility issues, you could provide um, parking that um, is more accessible. Like you're not pulling out into, onto, onto gravel. Councillor Henderson. Well, I'm not sure how you would do that. That's pretty narrow at the bottom there. I lived in that neighborhood and you'd have to have it on the slope like Water Street is, only it would be more steeper than Water Street, because Center Street, as far as I know, is a bigger angle going up than uh, Water Street is, and they have their angle parking there. Like, Unless you mean they're gonna cut the corner off and have it like you pull into the parking type thing. Maybe Mr. Jolovic could speak to where the parking would be because um, I don't think it was on Center Street that they were envisioning putting the parking. Yes, through the chair. No, we were not envisioning uh, using, um, like creating a parking lot on Center Street. We're, all we talked about was using on ex existing parallel parking on, on, on Center that could be used. The idea was is that where TJ Dolan meets Center Street, there's a flat area there. Um, as you're coming down Center Street and you can make that turn, there's a fair bit of asphalt that's sitting in there. So the, the idea was is to create 
use some of that area in there to create about, you know, four to five parking spots. Uh, that was the intent. It wasn't uh, about creating uh, any other type of parking that would go into the existing green space that uh, fronts onto center. Thank you. Actually, further to that, I did have a question um, about uh, St. David, at the end of St. David, where it's going, it, where it would become a cul-de-sac in this proposal. Um, there would also be parking along that stretch um, on the side closer to the train tracks. Is that correct? Through the chair, yes. You know, there are there aren't any parking restrictions in now, and and. Uh, um, you can see that you know occasionally cars do use that they could uh you know we're looking at minimizing what the cul-de-sac would look like probably you know a hammerhead a bit of a hammerhead design is something to look at that could minimize any type of uh, green space that would be required in that area but there there's that option as well too there's there's also on st david's and on center street for for on street parking thank you are there any other comments or questions Seeing none, we'll uh, vote on the motion. All those in favor? And those opposed? So I think since I, I'm going to vote favor, that's five, five. So I would ask the clerk what, what comes next. So through the chair, as a tie vote, the motion is defeated. Okay, thank you. Councillor Vasilakos. Um, but the being this is in committee, it will come back to council, correct? This vote? Uh, through the chair, unless there was no other motion made, the, the item would just be listed to be filed. Councillor Bunting. Yes, thank you. I, I certainly don't want to see it being filed. Um, I'm full agreement for the St. Vincent to uh, St. David uh, being, but I, without the, the drawing, and I'm not talking about a technical drawing, I, I, I'd, I'd sketch that actually indicates so that we're perfectly clear exactly what it is we're voting on would be much appreciated. And this, if this can be brought up at uh, the council, then we, it's, at the moment, it's just words on a piece of paper, and I know I read it several times, and I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on here. And of course, when you combine that with all the, I guess, the misapprehension or, or, or the misinformation that the people had with regards to the the green space and the the memory garden or the uh, being being interfered with in some way, shape, or form, it just caused complete confusion. So, uh, picture says a thousand words in my my book. And I would like to sort of see that something like that to, so we could have a good look at it. Thank you. Councillor Gaffney. I'll second Councillor Bunting's referral motion. Yeah. Okay, so we're asking for the motion to be referred, Refer back, the, to staff. referred back to staff. Yep. Um, uh, Ms. Thompson. Yes, thank you. Just wondering, I think it would be, I think it would be helpful if uh, direction could be given as to you want a map, but is there a particular option or something in particular that you would like the, the drawing just to assist staff in uh, providing the information that you're requesting? So is it option three that we're considering that we'd like a drawing of option three only and not the other options? Is that Am I interpreting that correctly? I guess that Councillor Bunting, it's your motion, so. Yes, I, I, would, I would make it for option three. Councillor Gaffney, is that uh, your second? Did you second that? Yes, yes, Madam Chair, I, I, I agree with Councillor Bunting. Okay, uh, Councillor Henderson. Oh, I would like to see option two. At the very minimum, at least there's one trail through there. That's one win. Mayor Matheson. I, I think you want to look at other uh, the other option as well. At least give yourself some grounding so that if three doesn't pass, there is an opportunity to look at other sure. other design. Okay, Councillor Bunting. Uh, friendly amendment. Uh, that's acceptable. 
uh, to include option two and three. Uh, and the sketch, we're not looking at detailed drawings, we're talking at what it would look like. Any other comments? Councillor Vaslakos. And is that to come back to the council meeting where it comes to council or back to committee? Um, asking, going to ask the perhaps staff give us some idea is if, the, if it's possible for it to come to council, that would be more expedient. Sure. And Ms. Thompson. Yes, thank you. Um, perhaps um, if staff could take that back and while we're working on the, the drawings, we will have a discussion on procedure um, and um, we'll, we'll advise you whether it's coming back to this committee or directly to council for the next, um, next meeting on the 25th. Thank you. Are there any other further comments? Councillor Henderson. I just wondered, um, I was wondering if it makes a difference whether the trail's on the north side or the south side. I'm assuming you want it on the north side so that the cars aren't as close to the road if we end up going with a one way. But it, what was the reasoning behind having it on the north side versus the south side? Because I noticed it says something about you have to move street lights. So maybe if it was on the other side, you wouldn't have to. Um, Mr. Dulovic? Yeah, through the chair. Uh, the issue was just to, to create the room. There's that. It's the first section when you're coming from St. David's. It's very, it's very, uh, uh, it's narrow there to create the trail, and it's just just in that area to slightly. If you're talking about the one-way option, I'm, I'm assuming Councillor Henderson, and, and it's just a slight uh, uh, shift that would have to be done there. Um, I think you know the, the biggest shift would happen if we did option one where you tried to construct a trail a lot and maintaining the two lanes of traffic. So uh, it's not as much, but what we were trying to do is, is line up the trail so it would be closer to, to the, to the uh, water side. Councillor Clifford. Yeah, I was gonna ask when we're talking about option two and option three, um, I'd ask our acting director, what's the cost difference between option two and option three? Um, maybe Mr. Dulovic can answer that one. Uh, to the chair, that's, that's something the staff to look at in more detail. Um, you know, they, they did talk about the road reconstruction of being about, you know, $200,000. So, you know, you're, I would think at least uh, $100,000 if we look at uh, reconstructing a one lane road, but that's something that uh, uh, engineering staff would, would, have to, uh, uh, would have to confirm. So that would be in addition to uh, some of the costs that we had indicated previously. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor of the motion on the floor? Those opposed? Okay, that carries. Thank you, everyone. Uh, 6.2 is passive house standards and net zero ready homes. Uh, we do have a staff recommendation that uh, the development of green standard policy, including the development of programs to offset the associated costs, such as a reduction in development charges or property tax relief, be referred to the 2022 budget. Councillor Henderson. Are you moving the? Yeah, okay. And Councillor Vasako seconding. Any comments? Councillor Clifford. Yeah, uh, when I read the report, I, I also think it's um, it's important that, uh, but like with what we've got out of Ottawa with, with our, um, the, the extra taxes that Ottawa is, is uh, like from gas tax and, and what this, so I would hope we, if we're gonna do some, something like this, uh, it would be helped that either, either Ottawa or the province would help also, because I think for municipalities, to do it themselves. Um, I, I think it's the, the whole issue about greenhouse gas, it's it's an issue for the province and for like for Canada. So I, I would hope we'd have some help from Ottawa in particular. Thank you. Um, seeing no other comments, we'll uh, vote on the motion on the floor. All those in favor? 
Any opposed? Well, that's carried. Thank you. Um, uh, item seven is a report of the manager of environmental services. 7.1 is update of sewer policy S.1.8 and sewer policy S.1.10. Uh, I'm not sure if a uh, staff member would like to speak to this report. So that maybe the manager of um, the, the director of. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Mr. Greenshaw. Thank you to the chair. Um, I guess in short, this report uh, was brought forth just to clear up some of the language um, from what was previously presented back in the uh, the fall. Just to be clear that the uh, the city's position is that we will only replace um, one service in a shared service type scenario. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so we need a, somebody to move the staff recommendation. Councillor Gaffney and seconded by Councillor Vasilakos. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Henderson. Sorry. Um, so what Taylor was saying there, Tyler, Taylor was saying there about um, only, so is that a, talking about like if it's a semi or uh, um, an apartment building or something? Is that what you mean? It just- yeah. Sure, through the chair. Um, in many uh, older subdivisions throughout the city, um, two houses um, often or sometimes uh, share a single sanitary service and this creates problems when there's backing up and who's responsible, uh, that kind of thing. And the idea is that if people want to separate their service that there is a subsidy provided for, for that uh, to happen. Well, can you explain what you meant by it, it would only be for one? Uh, to the chair. Yeah, so, um, the, since there already is one service effectively in place, that one would remain. And to ensure that they're separated, the city would bring in another service um, so that the houses will remain stable. Uh, we wouldn't replace the existing one because it operates effectively and, and we wouldn't touch that, just provide the new service. Thank you. Okay, seeing in no other comments, all those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? And that carries. Thank you. Uh, 7.2 uh, is the 2020 Stratford Water Pollution Control Plant Annual Report. Uh, and we do have a staff recommendation that it be received for information. Councillor Ritzma and Councillor Bunting, moving and seconding. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Um, item eight is the report of the events coordinator. 8.1 is a request for exemption from the noise control bylaw for the hub Stratford's five year anniversary. Uh, the staff recommendation is that approval would be given to the request. Anyone like to make that motion? Councillor Henderson, are you making the motion to approve that? Just need someone to second that. Councillor Seven, any comments, questions? All those in favor? Opposed if any? And that's carried, thank you. Um, item nine is for the information of the committee, uh, several items there. And item 10 is adjournment. Councillor Vaslakos and Councillor Clifford, all those in favor? Carried, thank you. Madam Clerk, can the reconvene? Through your worship, item 15.1, a declaration of pecuniary interest. Are there any declarations made at standing committee and to be restated at the reconvene portion? Seeing none. Seeing that, item 15.2 is reading of the bylaw and there is only one remaining bylaw, which is bylaw 11.7, the confirmatory bylaw. And this bylaw requires first and second reading and third and final reading. Councillor Sabin's moving first and second reading, seconded by Councillor Bunting. All those in favor? 
Opposed to any, it's carried. Third and final reading, Councillor Gaffney and Councillor Henderson. Moving third and final reading of the confirmatory bylaw. All those in favor? Opposed to Benny, and that's carried. And a motion to adjourn this afternoon's proceedings. Councillor Vazalakos and Councillor Beatty. All those in favor? Opposed to Benny, and that's carried. Thank you. <laughs>